So let's talk about legalism for a second. I think a lot of Christians, they get a little bit scared when we talk about disciplines and when we talk about prayer and, and worship and, and Bible study and all these different things. I think sometimes Christians get a little bit timid when we talk about disciplines because I get a lot of comments of people that are like, well, I'm really afraid to sink into legalism. I don't want to be a Christian that's sucked into legalism. And let me just differentiate this idea of legalism because we can talk about disciplines all day long and and, and disciplines are necessary in order to foster a healthy environment and a healthy relationship with, frankly, anybody. I want the healthiest possible relationship that I can have with the Lord. And so in order for that to happen, we have to have disciplines in place just like any other. And let's just let debunk legalism right now because, okay, Romans 3.20 says this, For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. And so what's Paul saying here? Paul is saying you can earn your salvation. No amount of righteous acts that you try and do and attain will allow you to get salvation in your life. And that actually is extremely comforting for me. And I hope it's extremely comforting for you because I know myself and I'm sure you know yourself as well. Like I mess up every single day. I mess up all the time. I sin every day. I try not to, but we, we're human and we have human nature. So this verse is actually really reassuring of Romans 3.20 that works cannot get you salvation. I I can earn my way to be in the right standing of God. That's what legalism is. But you can't earn your way to salvation. But here's what we can differentiate. Rejecting legalism is not ignoring the law. It's understanding that Jesus fulfilled the penalty of breaking the law. When we reject legalism, we're not saying that the law is all bad. And we're not saying we reject everything that the law says. We just understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, meaning that when we can't measure up to the law, Jesus died on a cross and gave us grace. And because of that, he took our place in the penalty of sin. And so he fulfilled the law. He paid the penalty of breaking the law. So with legalism, it's still a matter of, okay, there are still standards of God that I abide by. And there are still laws that I maintain in my life today, moral laws from God himself, but it's understanding that there's nothing that I can do to earn the salvation. I just posted a short and a reel talking about how we have this new age spiritualism that we're calling progressive Christianity that is sneaking its way into churches and into theology and into people. And this idea of progressive Christianity is the idea of it so rejects legalism, but it runs to the other side where it says, I can do whatever I want to do because God is so loving. Like I get to, I get to live my life the way that I want to live my life. And I get to do these things because God's love and grace is over my life. And in doing so, they actually completely reject the standards of God. And that is way out of balance as well. It's on the other side. So we have legalism, which is super out of balance over on the left. And then we have this progressive new age spiritualism movement that is way on the right. So how do we get to the middle is understanding that disciplines have to take a role in our relationship with Christ because we should always be striving to do things that bring us closer to him. So if we understand that legalism is not about the action, but it's about the expectation, then it'll help us. So we do spiritual disciplines, not with the expectation that we are earning something from God that we can never earn, but we are, we are doing spiritual putting spiritual disciplines in place with the expectation that this gets us closer to God, helps us better understand God, helps us better serve God. And in doing so, that, that's what helps. So I just wanted to talk about that first, because when we talk, when I talk about disciplines and I'm going to talk about structure and I'm going to talk about all these things, there's usually a group of people that are like, well, wow, why are you preaching this? Why are you so legalistic? Why are you saying that I have to do this? And how, you know, that's, that's legalism. It's not legalism. I'm just trying to help you have an effective walk with with Christ. And in doing so, that means there are things that we have to prioritize in our life. And I'll explain it like this. So I'm married. I've been married for seven years to the love of my life, Adrian. She's the absolute best. And so Mondays, on Mondays, we both have our day off. That is our date day. And Monday date day is non negotiable. It's not negotiable. It's scheduled out that Monday. It's like, I don't work. I don't go golf. I don't hang out with people outside. Like that's not Adrian. Maybe we'll double day anything that I do on a Monday. It's like, I have a conversation with her and I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, let's, let's, let's talk together. And if we're both okay with something and something pops up, of course, like we can do that. But my priority on Monday is Adrian. It's my wife and nothing is going to get in the way of that. Now, because I schedule out Mondays, because I make it a discipline in my 
my life to prioritize Mondays and to give Mondays solely to to my wife. Does that mean that like our that's legalism and our marriage is stale and our relationship isn't authentic? No, not at all. It's actually the opposite. Like that actually probably means that I have an intention of maintaining my healthy relationship with my wife. And because of that, there's priorities that come up. It's not like, oh, my marriage has no real love and no sincerity because you schedule things out and you have discipline. You don't know. No, no. Every relationship in your life requires structure. If you try and have a relationship with people that does have, doesn't have any structure, feelings will get hurt. People will get frustrated and the relationship is, is going to fall apart. And the same thing goes with our relationship with Christ. It needs some type of structure because structure creates priority. We have to show priority in our lives because that helps us grow closer to Christ.